I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. And today we have Deborah Salmons. Thank you for coming and joining us, all the way from Logan. Yes. I appreciate you coming and sharing your story. So I guess we always usually kind of get started with where you were born and a little bit about your background. Well, I was born in Jackson, Michigan. Oh, okay. Back in the... That's kind of a cold country. Yes, a it bit. is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Different kind of cold, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then brothers and sisters, how many did you um, have? I have just the one, just one half brother. Oh, okay. I was, I was 15 years his junior, so basically I was an only child. Oh, I, yeah, I can imagine. With, so. And mom and dad, were they uh, Mormon? No. My... Father was not religious at all. Okay. And my mother was, um, in the beginning, she was Pentecostal, and then she switched over to um, another little Christian sect that is very non-denominational and don't go by any titles. Oh, okay. So they were just and and they're the, Christians, yeah. believers. And they took you to church, did she? And... Yes, I went every time the church doors were open. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, okay, so uh, you grow up in that area? I, Did you stay there? Um, no, I left shortly after high school because, oh, yeah. because um, well, the sect that I was, that my mom joined um, was a very restrictive, very legalistic sect. Oh. And... Besides which, my brother, my half, my um, half brother, was a minister, and it was sort of like in this culture would be like being a Mormon's, uh, our bishop's kid. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the standards were so high and so legalistic that I just couldn't take them, so I split. But, but mom stayed in it. Mom stayed. And your mom half stayed brother in it. was Oh yes, in my it? half brother stayed in it, and yeah. and um. I guess this would be the time to say that um, as much as I kicked against the pricks because <laughs> I really, really, really didn't like being his sister, kid sister, because standards were higher for me yeah. than he expected of me and, and my mom expected of me. So um, in spite of that, the one thing that I knew throughout my life is my brother was always praying for me. And, really? that's, and that is so special for me because tomorrow is the second anniversary of his death. And oh. the one thing that I miss the most is knowing that he's on his knees praying. <laughs> no matter what the situation, I knew my brother was praying. Praying for you to come back to the set yes. or to, be, yeah, to bring, find Jesus or to... Well, he knew that, he knew that um, I, had, I had made a profession of faith. Actually, several of them. Um, <laughs> while you were growing while up. While I was growing up because... You know, I first in in the first church my mom was in the Pentecostal church. I was saved and baptized in that church, their way of thinking. Sure. And then um, when I was thirteen, um, I think I made it a profession of faith more to please my mother. My my grandma had just died. My mom was a basket case, and <laughs> and I just I think I did it more to please her than really. Um, meaning it and um, but then when I was 17 I actually did um, ask Christ into my heart and mm. what prompted that well I, I I mean I knew that I couldn't get away from the fact that I had been trained up as a child you know in the way you should go and when you're old you won't depart I mean I, it, it just I couldn't get it um, 
away from the fact that I knew that I needed to be saved and I knew that um, I needed Christ in my life. And Do you think you understood grace at this time? No, I really didn't. What, I mean, what I, Jesus had actually done for us. And... I, I think I understood it to a certain extent. I mean, I understood it enough to know that that was how I was going to get to heaven, but I didn't understand the bigger picture of what all grace could, could do for my life. Yeah, and how freeing that could yes. be. Yes, yes. Okay, so you, you must, then you leave home? Yeah, I left home right after high school. Okay, and what happens after that? Well, I went to, um, this is a funny, really funny in the long run, because um, I went to a very regular Baptist association, a regular Baptist college, Grand Rapids Baptist College and Seminary. I went there for a semester, hmm. and that's where I met my husband. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I should have known that from the very start that it wasn't going to work. But um, did you marry immediately then? Uh, no, kind of, we did, no, we broke long? up after because I only was able to go to school the one semester, and I had to go get a job and work. And and we broke up, and then um, we got back together about a year later, and. Yeah, and, yeah. I we got married because well we got married because I managed to get myself I had gone back to my mom's set to try to please her oh. and I managed to get myself kicked out so oh. <laughs> now this college was was your uh, husband then looking to very, become, was, become a pastor or? he was no well in the beginning he was just going to college okay and it, his his wanting to become a pastor occurred later in the marriage. Okay. And you weren't so. there to become a pastor? Or no, I was there. I was just there for college. For the and marriage. I was hoping that um, my mother sometimes did things that were irrational. And she was <laughs> she was bound to determine that all colleges were communists. And they turned mm -hmm. kids into communists. And so she wouldn't allow my father to help me go to college. Just too liberal and stuff. Yeah, and and she'd let him pay for nursing school, but I didn't want to be a nurse. <laughs> and I, I wanted to be a teacher, so um, I think going to Grand Rapids Baptist College was a way of trying to meet her halfway. It didn't work, it backfired, but it was a try. That was your effort. <laughs> yeah, it was my effort. Well, I know something happened with the husband, and, and that part of the story brings us kind of to where you Start yes. looking at Mormonism. What yeah. happens? Well, he was in the army, and well, I meant what is that? Where you run into the missionaries? Well, yeah, he was, he was in the army at the time. We were stationed down in Missouri. Okay, and um, he was going to get out of the military and go. We were actually looking at Tennessee Temple um, to go to to go to school to become a youth pastor. He said he wanted to be a youth youth pastor. And I had told God, if, you, if this is really your will, then I would like to have one more child and get through that first year where all the expenses for shots and all that stuff, you know, we're taken care of, yeah. we're taken care of a military system. Yeah. And sure enough, you know, I, I did, I became pregnant right on time. And, <laughs> and, um, eight months into the pregnancy, he told me something that just blew me away and made it very clear that he was not fit to be a youth pastor. So it just blew my, and I sort of fell apart. Um, I went back to my wild days a little bit and, and um, started drinking. And How and, long did that last? It didn't last too long because <laughs> um, I had a friend who was actually stationed in Korea, but um, he was very inactive Mormon, but... Oh. He wanted to to crowl me, and so he threatened. He actually blackmailed me. He said, "I had my choice: either he'd come home and confront my husband, or I could call the Mormon missionaries." And you chose the missionaries. <laughs> I chose the Mormon missionaries. Oh, and so goodness. that was my introduction to the Mormon Church. And so, and I actually went through all the missionary discussion like it was back then, and then um. He got orders for Texas, and 
I decided at, at actually at the pastor there in Missouri is at his encouragement. I decided to give my marriage one more chance and went to Texas with him. And um, mm. the marriage just disintegrated more. Uh -huh. um, his behavior yeah. got to where he was a threat to my children. And so I um, ended up calling the Mormon missionaries. And, um, oh, you hadn't joined the church then? I didn't the in Missouri. Oh, okay. I, 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 I put it on lessons, hold. Yes. You didn't, okay. I put it on hold because I wanted to give my marriage one more chance. Okay. And when it disintegrated, I just I couldn't really handle things. And so I called the Mormon missionaries. And um, Had you liked their message? I, I had liked their message. Um, what really appealed to me is coming out of a very legalistic background where everything was a punishment from God. Um, my, it had just become apparent that my son was a special needs child. Mm -hmm. And that's something really hard to cope with, you know. Mm -hmm. this, and I was struggling with that. And um, the Mormon message just really, instead of him being a curse, he was suddenly a blessing. And I was told that God oh. um, must have thought I was somebody special to, to have, have entrusted him to me. Yeah. And it just... And that appealed to you? That then? really, it, well, yeah. it did. And also because I really felt like the, the whole time I was in the Mormon church, I was so convinced that um, that was going to be my children's way out. Yeah. You know, they were going to have a normal life because the Mormon church was going to be able to give that to them. Mm. And back in that day, they were, they were doing um, the, the old mother education lessons. And... I loved those Sundays because I felt like it was giving me tools that were going that were going to help me be the parent I needed to be to these to at the time it was just the one challenging child yeah. and and my daughter who wasn't I mean she was an angel <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> well so did you join it had you joined the church by then or? no I no I actually didn't until it was just about a couple weeks before my divorce, um, the missionaries were getting ready to go home, and they really wanted to baptize me. <laughs> before they went home. Before they went home. And so they um, set up a meeting with the, with the um, stake president, and we decided that, or he decided that instead of having to get my husband's permission, if I invited him to the baptism, that would be... Permission enough. Permission yeah. enough. So yeah. they went ahead and baptized me. Because oh, back then, I guess they couldn't couldn't do it without a no, husband's you, permission. They needed his permission, and I said there was no way I was. I mean, I was trying to get through to him that you know this yeah. is over, and there was no way I was going to ask his permission. Did you sense at all that that um, I guess since since I view Mormonism now more as a legalistic situation a system, did you sense that at all? No, it didn't seem that way in the beginning. It it seemed so freeing compared to what I would, what had been, been coming through. out of that. It it just it, it gave me a chance because because I was really bitter against God at that point mm -hmm. um, because of what had happened in my marriage. And it gave me a chance to sit back and reevaluate what I thought about God. And I mean, I, I can never, never, never say that my years in the Mormon church were wasted right. because I needed to go through that. I needed that away from the mainstream Christianity thing to, for me to really sit down and, and finally realize what I really believed. It mm -hmm. was a very long process, but it, it, it was needed. You ended up with a strong testimony of the church. I mean, you I, bore, I did. bore your testimony yes. regularly. And I, I did. I, I was just so convinced that it, it, was, it was especially true for my children. That's yeah. what I kept hanging on to. That, um, cause, because I still sort of, on the back burner of my mind, my life was pretty much wasted. And... Um, oh. I mean, I, I was an adopted child with a mother that um, could be very, adopted mother that could be very cruel. And, you know, she would pick up the phone and pretend to call the judge and say she didn't want me anymore. And, oh dear. you know, she, she, she I know now she was mentally ill, but mm -hmm. anyway, um, 
But you didn't feel worthy then. I, I didn't. I really didn't. My whole life, I didn't have self-esteem. I didn't have. Um, and so the church sort of stepped in and became, it gave me that sense of, yeah. that I longed for, that I needed. Mm. It became my stability, my reason to, to stay sober, my reason to... <laughs> <laughs> Deal with the issues that you yes. had, and your, yes. your son, and yes. this, the divorce and everything else. Yeah. yeah. And you did that for, what, 20, 26 years, was it? Yeah, somewhere say? around in there. Yeah. And had a testimony, and did you ever go to the temple? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I just, I, I could never quite get to that point. Yeah. So what happens to kind of change thinking there? Well, number one, um, I had family that just were very antagonistic toward the, the church and toward me, the actually. The fact that you joined the church. And, and one of the real eye-openers, as bad as it may seem, um, my mother had passed, and we were on bad terms when she passed mm -hmm. because a lot of it was because of my activity in the church. But um, my father had a stroke, and I had invited my brother to set in on my dad's care conference and um, because my dad was not really his dad. And I was just the and, half brother that's yeah, been praying for you all yeah, this time. Yeah, praying for me all this time. <laughs> he he just didn't have a whole lot of wisdom sometimes, and he lit into me um, in front of my aunt about my association with the Mormon Church, and it really was a wake up call for me because um, I I all the way home I kept thinking, you know. I'm going to have to deal with my brother one of these days. <laughs> I've got to do some reevaluation because I can't imagine being thousands of miles away from my support system and having to deal with Jerry and bury my father and do everything that I have to do. And so that, that started me thinking. And so, um, and then about that time, um, I believed a bishop, had a special mantle from God, and had, well, inside track. and oh, inspiration. Yeah. From, and he, and yeah. And he um, very, very strongly suggested that the state would have resources to help my son that I didn't have, and that I needed to put him in foster care. Hmm. And it just turned into a nightmare. And I became very quickly aware of, of the fact that <laughs> the bishops are people. Just a man. And they, yeah, and, and <laughs> praise, that praise for help, but yeah, yeah nothing but that special. there's no yeah. And so that started me thinking, and also um, a couple of few years after that, maybe about five years after that, um, I went to a chamber of commerce dinner because I was I was secretary for Habitat at Humanity for the time, and I went to a chamber of commerce dinner. And the person I went with, something happened to their car and we needed a ride home. And so to this day, it had to be God. I know it was God because, <laughs> because Marilyn didn't get, and she didn't get preached at nothing. You know, it was, she got out of the car scot free. Um, between her house and my house, Dub really started witnessing to me and, and she wouldn't take no for an answer. It was like, what time shall I pick you up Sunday morning? <laughs> she wanted to take you to she church. She wanted you to take me to church. Oh. And um Did you go? I did with yeah. Because she had, had so they had me trapped. I had, I at the time I still had a problem saying no. <laughs> so I, I went with her and I walked in and I was just like, This is this is home. This is where I belong, you know. What I made you feel I, that way? Because I it was the spirit. It was definitely God's spirit. I mean, I knew, I mean, I had been searching for so long and I knew that something was wrong. And um, During your Mormon time, you mean? During my, the, the tail end of the Mormon time. I just, I, I knew that things weren't adding up. I, I had worked, this is gonna sound terrible, but, and it's not really, well, anyway, I worked at the DI for about three years. Mm. And I had a boss that, she, 
if she saw herself the way ever other people saw herself, she would have been horrified. <laughs> but she could be very, very, I saw a lot of hypocrisy, let's put it that yeah. way. And so that is also made me start questioning. Um, you can see all these little different things. Yeah, God a lot was. of these, yeah, <laughs> a lot of these little indications that there's something wrong here. Yeah. And um, always also in the back of my mind was this thing with my family, you know, my brother and stuff. And um, at first I thought, because because the church she took me to was an Assembly of God's church, which is sort of Pentecostal. And so at first I thought, oh, great. This is just going to be another thing for my brother to be mad about. But he was so happy to get me out of the Mormon church that he <laughs> never, ever questioned the Pentecostal thing, you know. He was praying for you to come out. That's, he was praying he was taking praying, anything and praying. He can get. So, yeah. and, and, and God really had this way of, of totally working things out because I had an aunt that had always been the peacemaker. And I was her special birthday girl because we shared the same birthday. And, and, um, I had always said, God, you cannot let my aunt go before my, my dad goes. Hmm. Well, it didn't happen that way. My aunt went first. And I went home to her funeral. I went home to Michigan to her funeral. And it really gave my brother and I a chance to, to, to mend some fences so yeah. that when it, That's nice. when it actually came time for daddy to die, we were, we were totally okay. I bet and he we was could thrilled, joke. We could we could joke about, about you know yeah. me getting the inheritance and him not you know that kind of thing, and um, there was no hard feelings left. He was just so glad that I had gotten out of the Mormon Church. But yeah. um, so you've come kind of come to this. Did you then keep going to the Mormon Church and the, to the to the yes, assembly I, church? Yeah, yeah, because. Um, I raised my children Mormon, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, it's hard to break that. Uh, it, it it really cycle. is, and because I I didn't want to confuse my son more than he was already confused. And um, actually, what happened is is too that um, I was living with a schizophrenic and a bipolar. <laughs> And, and I was going nuts over to myself living with those two. And um, I was struggling with some depression. And my girlfriend had stepped in and gone to a bishop and said, look, because I, at the time I was trying to get my social security disability. And so I was living on nothing. And she went to the bishop and said, look, you've got to help this lady because otherwise <laughs> she's, she's you're going to have a big mess on your hands. So um, that sort of, you know. Yeah. Because, you know, you, I have to say, because this summer it happened again. Um, I had some major surgery and, you know, Relief Society will step in and bring in meals and do the help that my, my, my daughter won't do. Mm. And because um, she's got her hands full with her own family. And um, yeah, the church has a, a great inner networking between home teachers and visiting yes, teachers. Yes, they do. They, they, so it's it's, it's good fantastic. And I, and for a person who has had to raise children on their own, um, mm -hmm. in the end, I ended up with two special needs children because yeah. um, my daughter was hit by a car and suffered a closed head injury. So I was dealing with two oh <laughs> special needs children. I can't imagine all and, you've gone through. And, and so... Um, they were the church was you know fantastic that way. Uh -huh. um, I I don't think I could have. But what was missing then? What was missing was a real sense of who I was and what God had done for me. I, it was more of instead of me trying to work to become perfect. Um, I started to be able to see who I was in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. And there, there, there's, a, there's a, just a little part in the Psalms that, um, yeah, sure that became you. so important to me because you got to understand, um, I grew up being stigmatized by my mother because I was illegitimate and, um, and, yeah, I, and, I, I, and I had a lot of health problems when they adopted me. But in Psalms 139, where it says, 
For you formed me in my inner parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And <laughs> when it, that had to get, I had to see that. Yeah. And, and I had two Christian ladies um, that were just fabulous, that just were so patient with me. I remember one Easter Sunday as I was coming out, I just, I was so mad at the time because I wanted God to heal my son. Sure. That's what I wanted. I wanted total healing for him. And I couldn't understand why I was so bad that God well, couldn't grant me this one request that I wanted. And they were, they were so great with me <laughs> and patient with me. Yeah. And Well, let me, I'm, just because we're running out of time, believe it or not, but um, you started giving back. You started becoming yes. a missionary to mentally ill. Yes, and I did. Tell us about that real quickly. Um, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I started, it started out by helping some of my, my son's friends. And also, by that time, I had gone through a lot of healing and was really starting to realize that the Bible actually holds a lot of answers. Well, it you, has answers to everything. You really. were teaching middle school too, right? Was that part of the No, problem? I had quit teaching middle teaching school by, by that time. Okay. Um, I couldn't hold down a teaching job and be my mother, my son's mother. Okay. It just, it wasn't in the works. Um, so I it started out of that. And I very quickly, by working and getting to know some of them, I, I realized very quickly that um, most of them also had abuse issues. Uh, and Kind of a common thread, yes, I guess. And, and abuse issues is something I'm very familiar with. And um, and so the ministry just sort of grew out of that and where, where God had put me. And I started um, working with women and teaching them um, out of God's words um, about God's grace and how they're, wow. they're totally, they're perfect in his eyes. And some of these were LDS ladies. Yeah, some of them were LDS and they, women. And they carry such guilt because yes, they, they, do. They, they blame themselves for yes. anything that comes along. And, and yeah. you, were, you, you felt that same blame oh, because yeah. of the way your, your son was and so on. Uh, Deborah, we're actually out of time. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's, gone, <laughs> it's gone so fast. But I do appreciate you sharing. And I, there's so much more to your story, I can tell. Maybe we'll have to catch you another time or something. But, um, but you found joy in the grace of, of oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I finally have a sense of self-esteem because yeah. it's... Because it's not in anything I did. Yeah. It's, it's what God did. Yes. And I praise that. Thanks for joining us.